not by the evidence. He says that uh, Chicago police had a plan over this bloody 4th of July weekend. Nonetheless, as you indicated, Corey, there was uh, a uh, count of casualties that could have been from Afghanistan or Iraq. We'll make it uh, harder for law-abiding citizens and criminals will still get their guns. In many cases, the offenders, uh, felons, uh, some out on parole, some out on bond. We have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. There are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that. Mayor Bloomberg, why, why, why can you defend yourself but not the majority of Americans? I mean, look at, look at the team of security you got. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this, that we need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Was this the weapon of choice for a new kind of terrorist? When a five-year-old girl said she and a classmate should shoot each other with bubbles, the school called it a terrorist threat. AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Lay down your arms, you damned rebels! But we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. What kind of a situation in the U.S. would well, you see like that happening? See, I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons. Discovered that clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us to say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down if you want them come and take them rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty it's alex jones The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. 
discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. I wanted to not so much ask Ron Paul his view of this. I mean, I, I want to do that. I also wanted to ask him what we should do. I mean, I think it shows how effective the liberty movement is uh, that the system wants to silence us. But at the same time, I think we have to address this uh, and really discuss how we're supposed to respond to it. Because uh, Matt Drudge said he's been told by high-level government folks the persecution's about to kick into high gear. He visited me two weeks ago to deliver that message. A lot of other high-level people are telling me the same thing. I know with your contacts, sir, you must be getting the same intel. Uh, so can you speak to this? And you're, I mean, in Europe, they're arresting Germans that criticize open borders. Uh, just, it's not just here, but totalitarianism seems to be spreading its wings. You know, when I left Congress uh, a couple years ago, I listed several things that I thought were the, great, were the greatest danger to us. And the top one was freedom of expression, the First Amendment, because if, if we're not allowed to express ourselves, it makes it so difficult for us to compete with the propagandists from our government and from the media. So I think that is, it is crucial. But, you know, we uh, are so hypocritical when it comes to our government because they pretend that uh, we should support the issue of knowing the truth and knowing what's going on with government, and we even write laws uh, to protect the whistleblowers who are telling the, us the truth. But uh, now we have numerous whistleblowers that uh, are put in prison, uh, you know, if they tell the truth. Matter of fact, the real irony is, is the chairman of the agency that's supposed to be in charge of protecting all the whistleblowers, he, he got fired because he told uh, the truth about the whistleblower program. It really doesn't work. Now, th this is getting worse, and there's a lot going on right now. But, you know, just recently when we uh, read about the death of Erin Schiff, uh, he, he was actually in prison and killed by our government because he spoke out about the unconstitutionality of the way taxes were being uh, pay, uh, collected. And it wasn't so much that he was not a violent person, he wasn't for anarchy or anything else. And, and I don't think he ever said the statement that there should be no taxes either. But because he said what the government was doing was unconstitutional and the, go and the government told him, you're not allowed to talk about that, and he did, and when he was 77, they put him in jail for 14 more years and literally, I think, killed him, you know, because it was a death sentence and it was a life sentence and he didn't get his medical care. So that's how ruthless uh, the government is. Now, in Erwin Schiff, I think, is a good lesson because what was he saying? He was challenging the financing of a, of a government that's runaway. So the same way, if somebody tells us the truth about what's going on in the Middle East and how we have involved ourselves in these wars, illegally and lied ourselves into these wars our presidents have, uh, you know, they can't tolerate that. They cannot tolerate the truth about our foreign policy. They cannot tolerate the truth about why they are ruthless in collecting uh, taxes. And they're not going to tolerate the truth about how the Federal Reserve is run. That's why 
I always believed that uh, the Federal Reserve, if everybody knew about it, and more people know about it now than ever before, if the people knew about it, they wouldn't support the Federal Reserve. And uh, fortunately, there's a lot of people waking up. But so much is done in secret. The bailouts are done in secret. So it's secret government that is the real issue. And when you talk about the ultimate secrets of government, uh, then you become an enemy of the state. And uh, when, you, when you have an empire, truth is treason in the empire of lies. And uh, right now, people are considered tre treasonous if they start telling us the plain truth about what our government's doing to us. That's right. Ron Paul, LibertyReport.com, one of many powerful sites. He's doing syndicated radio vignettes, daily television, reaching millions of people. And that's why they're coming in and wanting to censor and wanting to control and wanting to shut down competition because we're peacefully taking action. Uh, Erwin Schiff that uh, died, Peter Schiff, frequent guest here, one of the top advisors, of course, to Ron Paul's campaign previously on economics. Uh, his dad was still chained down even when he couldn't speak anymore, and they basically wouldn't give him any medical care, and he died uh, after spending uh, 13 of a 14-year prison sentence. And I remember it was in the Las Vegas Review-Journal when the judge said in the courtroom, I remember covering it on air when he first went to prison 13 years ago, you know, you, you were told don't sell this book anymore. You were told don't give speeches anymore. So I'm going to send you to prison for the maximum sentence. So he, they admittedly sent him to prison and then killed him in prison, as you said, uh, Ron Paul, uh, and you're a medical doctor speaking to this, for his speech. And that's where America has gotten to, where I've now had feds contact me, multiple feds, and tell me that the word is I shut up or they're going to set me up. And that's where this country's come to. And it's very, very sad. Uh, specifically, though, solutions what do we do, sir, in the face of this, if they do try to declare some civil emergency, if there's some false flags like OKC blamed on patriots? We're trying to fix this peacefully, and I think we're winning peacefully as while they're escalating, but what do we do if they start World War III with the Russians? What do we do if they start federalizing the state houses that we know the Defense Department's been tasked to prepare to do? Uh, what do we do when... Truth becomes stranger than fiction, and they become nakedly tyrannical against us. Well, when it's when it's domestic, and they are are at us all the time. Uh, I don't advocate violence. As a matter of fact, uh, for for moral reasons, but for practical reasons, they have way more guns than we have. But I also know that truth can win out uh, in in the end. So it's getting the message out, whether it's your program or what I do and others. There's more now than ever before. So I think the most important regulation or law that we have to, uh, you, you know, protect is, the, is our right to use the Internet and to, uh, do our programming. And uh, this, is, uh, this is being systematically attacked. It's being attacked not only by our own governments and sometimes corporate interests, who knows, but sometimes it's international. But uh, if we lose that, that's going to be very bad. I happen to be optimistic about that, although I'm not technically, you know, astute to how it works. But I think, I think we'll get around it. I, I think the Internet's too big. So education is it, to expose and counteract the, the propaganda. Almost always the people don't want war, and then they get talked into it because they're told that you were going to be attacked, and if you don't support us, you're unpatriotic and you're un-American. But just think of uh, on the issue of Syria right now. They changed the prime minister in Canada because Canada got too cozy with sending planes over there and fighting and participating in our foreign policy. In the same way, when the American people spoke out a couple of years ago when uh, Obama wanted to bomb uh, Syria, the people said no. But Obama, of course, went ahead and did it anyway. And the British people spoke out, which was uh, a very historic event a couple years ago and voted against giving the authority uh, to their prime minister to go ahead. So the people are with us. Our job is to reach these people. And, of course, this is where I do become a bit optimistic about what's happening because I think the young people realize that we're in an economic crisis. I think they know there's something very suspicious going on with our our, uh, our, our, our our foreign policy, as well as the Federal Reserve and the financing, and they like personal liberty, and they like the Internet. And I just think the answers that we can find in a, uh, in a free society uh, and sound money uh, is so great. And all we have to do is get enough believers, and the government will change. The government is a reflection of the people's attitude. Right now, the attitude is still 
A lot of people are getting welfare, and a lot of people are talked into supporting the military-industrial complex. But they're, we're running out of money, and this, this is good because uh, what are they going to do? They have to change their mind. As long as they think there's a handout, whether it's the rich or the poor,